What up, guys? I'm Sleeveless. And I'm Optimal. And this is Teaching a Beginner to Draft. I'm your beginner, Optimal is your expert. Editing Sleeveless here. I forgot to mention we're giving away a Wilds of Eldrain pre release code. Stick around till the end for details. So basically, what we're going to do today is Optimal has picked out five cards. And I'm going to give them a grade either bomb, build around, or stay away from. And hopefully, together, we'll all learn how to evaluate draft cards. Um, you ready, Optimal? Absolutely. All right. What do you have for me first? Ooh, we got the Millennium Calendar. Yes. Okay. So my first thoughts on this card, it's not very good. But then it is an alternate win condition. If you get it down early, I read somewhere it only takes like eight turns of doubling this to actually win the game. But I'm going to go with my gut and say it's uh, stay away from. Yeah. Uh, you're generally going to want to stay away from this. Uh, I don't know. There's probably a rare case where you possibly want to sideboard this card in against other opponents who are playing very grindy and decks with very low win conditions. But those are very few and far between in draft. All right. Looks like I got one point. All right, next card, Cavernous Souls. So when it enters, choose a creature type, and basically it can tap for any color of mana. If you use that mana on that creature type, it can't be countered. Otherwise, it adds a colorless. Um, I think this is another card that's probably bad in draft. I know certain formats, they kind of have a control deck, but usually then they only play like two or three counters. So it's, I'm going to say this is stay away from from. <laughs> so this is more of a build around but only if you get it like later on right you have to be in a dedicated um creature deck before you want to commit to taking this so, so it might be good in the um lost caverns because there's supposed to be a lot of what, what are they calling it now kindred yes yeah so so with with kindred deck types like dinosaurs, pirates, and so forth, usually you're gonna if you could see this card wheel, right? Then you're happy to pick it up. You never want to like pick this in the first five or six picks. Okay. But it's not a it's not a complete stay away from. That's why I call it a build around. Okay. Because there are a bunch of dinosaurs that do float across all five colors. So sometimes you can do three or four colors and the cabinet souls helps. Okay, that makes sense. So, one for optimal. All right, so next up, Echoing Deeps. You may have Echoing Deeps enter the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land in a graveyard, except it's a cave in addition to its other types. Okay, this has got to be a stay away from. I don't see how this is ever really any good. Yeah, you, you, you always want to stay away from this card. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go on to the next card. Next up, contested ball game or game ball. I don't know why I want to invert those words every time. So two mana artifact. Whenever you're dealt combat damage, the attacking player gains control of contested ball game and untaps it. Two mana tap, draw a card, and put a point counter on contested game ball. And then it has five or more point counters on it. Sacrifice it, create a treasure token. My gut is to say this is bad, but also games can go kind of long so if you have a lot of blockers you could actually potentially draw a few cards off of it but like it's not a turn two play so i think it's a build around like it's gonna ha it can't go in a very aggressive deck it's gonna have to go into a slower deck card advantage take over the game kind of thing you'll never want this card never it's a really? complete stay away yeah oh man. uh the reasoning for it is because especially like you don't you generally don't want cards that you're going to be playing the like passing around game because you then have to build your game around specifically around maximizing on this card which when you're dealing with draft being so aggressive so under no circumstances circumstances you should draft this card do not draft this card all right <laughs> well let's go to the next one all right next up sorceress spyglass two mana as it enters uh, the battlefield, look at your opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Um, if you're new to drafting or magic, it's important to know 
that you don't actually have to choose the name of a card in their hand. It could be any card. I mean, you, you don't even actually have to see it. As far as draft goes, I know there's like lands and you can name the lands. You can turn off the man lands by naming them. And seeing your opponent's hands, probably okay. But I still think this is a, a stay away. Yes, the, this is definitely a stay away. You can always sideboard it, but a lot of times it's not worth it. Well, Optimal, you want to do some draft picks? Sure. All right. Let's do a draft pick. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so pack one, pick one. What do we got? Intra paleontologist. Um, mana dorks are usually pretty good, uh, from what I understand. So real quick before we do a pick, um, the way I learned to draft was basically bread, right? Have you ever heard of that? Yep. You know, so everybody watching, it's bombs, removal, evasion, abilities, defense. And that's kind of like the order you want to evaluate cards. I heard there's something new called the quadrant method, but it's, it's way over my head. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? No, but uh, I mean, and generally you just want cards that do stuff. You don't want a card that does pretty much nothing and only does something under certain circumstances. So we only see eight cards here so i assume there's another row above no oh, yeah. there, there you go yeah so fortunately if we're going right into the meat and potatoes of it you can see there's a rare here that makes mana and also exiles cards which allows you to play them from exile so this card's busted oh really <laughs> so you take this every time <laughs> gotcha. uh if if the rare was not in the pack what would you consider taking um well, Splunking draws you a card. Um, I haven't looked at a lot of these cards, so give me a second. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, Daggering Scythe, Combat Trick, it's basically Titanic Growth, Giant Growth, whatever. It's not great. Skull Cap, two mana, opponent exiles a card from their hand. It's okay. I think, I think I'd be tempted to take Splunking. Sorry, so that everybody can see, just scroll up a little more. Oh, sorry, there we go. Yes. Yeah, no worries. So when Splunking enters the battlefield, draw a card, and you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you put a cave onto the battlefield this way, you gain four life. I know there's a bunch of caves. It's going to draw you a card. It's mana ramp, and usually mana uh, acceleration. I know it's usually good in draft because it lets you play your bombs quicker than your opponent, basically. So I think and... that's my so what's this card over here? Uh, the artifact one. Dig site conservator. It. Um, is it four mana? It is two. It's a two one sacrifice. Two. Dig store. Dig site conservator. Exile up the four target cards from a single graveyard. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, when it dies, you may pay four. If you do, discover four. That actually, that's not bad either. Kind of a mana sink later in the game when you have nothing going on. You get the pseudo cascade. Yeah, so it depends on what you want to do. So if the rare wasn't there, Spelunking, really, you generally want it for the cave deck. I mean, mind you, you could play it with your other with your other stuff as well that aren't cave related, but it's at its best when it's regarding caves, right? Yeah. Um, other than that, there is consideration for the two drop, uh, the two mana, two one, that. Uh, in the later game allows you to discover for but some of these cards aren't really like you know like right away but at the bottom if you go to the bottom i'm also a fan of fanatical offering and uh the tree the so tree. those were other picks as well i'm not familiar with this one um when it enters the battlefield look at the top six cards of your library you may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tap Put the rest on the bottom in a random, random order, and then craft for six, then it turns into a five-five. But you'll probably take Spelunking over the tree. Uh, but Fanatical Offering is definitely a card to consider, considering that there are a bunch of sacrifice strategies in the set. And Fanatical Offering, as an additional cost, cast a spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature, draw two cards, and create a map token. It's another, it's another one of those uh, versions of like Deadly Dispute and such. Yeah, that was, which that was generally tend to be that. very good. Village yeah, rights and so good. forth. All right, well, let's say we take the rare, and this should send us into a, a different pick. <clears throat> All right, so we got Thousand Moon, AM Tapple, Thousand Moon. It's not in our colors, or at least not in our first pick. Uh, let me scroll up so you can actually see it. 
Whenever you attack one or more non-gnome token creatures, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it, then create X 1-1 one -one colors gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking where X is the number of 1-1 one -one counters on anim account. Man, that's a lot of words. Um, that seems pretty good, really. So, in draft, a good thing to remember is that you don't always have to stick to your first pick. Mm. Also, keep in mind, you also don't always have to be just two colors. Yeah. So the thing is that green kind of gets away with that a lot, where you could be more than two colors if you're green base, right? Right. So in reality, following the green rare we just took, which makes a mana of any color, we could also just take this rare too, because it doesn't really get in the way of what we're trying to accomplish. And this card's also really insane so we could just also take that and build around it too yeah. you could just still theoretically cast this on curve by you could playing yeah this on two but, and then playing this on three yeah yeah but this card is nuts yeah it's very very nice. very good i didn't realize there were so many gnomes in this set well but, uh, well gnomes i, I believe is in the gnomes are in white blue and red i believe white blue and red kind of spread across there more yeah. more commonly one and blue so let's say, like we did in the first time, if um, there was no the rare moon yeah. wasn't there, um, what do you think? Um, I thought Raptor. Uh, so I can't Tricks. see it. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, what is the whip? The whip. The whip creature has reap and two tap target artifact creature. And eight discover ten. Eight and tap discover ten. So for two mana you can tap an artifact or creature. Or for eight mana you can discover discover ten. So one mana artifact, one mana to equip. That's pretty uh that's pretty good too. That's really cheap. Yeah. It's alright. It's okay. Yeah, I probably wouldn't first pick that. Um no, yeah, I do like the raptor. Raptor is very good. It's probably the raptor here. If you scroll down though, mm -hmm. there is there is there is an argument for uh, what's it called? Ray of is it Ray of Consuming. Rays of it's the black card there. Ray Rays of, of yeah. Ray of Ruin. There we go. There is an argument that just because it's rule, it is five mana, it is sorcery, it is awkward. Uh, but that's kind of black sting in this set. Yeah. There's also there's also Cosmian Blast. Cosmian Blast is nice. Gideon's Reproach is generally a decent card. Four damage is pretty good. So, but. With this rare here, you would take you would take animals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Hands out. <laughs> got molten collapse. Let me scroll up. Start looking at two different screen. Um, eclipse, unlucky draw. I think my pick would be the Dino Mation. Dino pronunciation is not my uh strong suit. This card here. Yeah, so if we're following what we're currently doing, I'd probably consider taking the Dino Automaton, uh, just because a it fits along with our first rare, um, the green one, right? Because yeah. it does like to exile dinosaurs sometimes and play them. Oh, and it's uh, a gnome to go along with the second pick. I didn't even notice that. It is also a gnome. Pick. Yeah. Well, actually, no. It doesn't go. It doesn't go along with the second pick because uh, it, it the second pick is about gnomes. non gnomes. Non gnomes. Well, no. It create so so so. Adam Pakal says whenever you attack with one or more non gnome creatures, you put a one oh. one counter on Adam, then you create X one one gnomes. So oh. it cares about non gnomes, but gives you gnomes. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, as I was saying, with the um, with the green rare, it says you may cast dinosaur creature spells from among cards you own exiled with the rare. If you cast the spell this way, that creature is a battlefield with a finality counter on it. So in reality, you could play the dinosaur, then have it die, and then exile it from your graveyard and then recast it again from the paleontologist. Okay, yeah. So okay. it works along with the green rare, which then puts us more towards green rare dinos with the splash of Anapaka. Okay, I like it. Yeah, yeah. that's something I wouldn't have even seen. Oh, it's totally taking it based just off 4-3 and Menace. 
I'm that too. Something else. Menace, yeah. menace is always very important. Yeah. And bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but if you didn't want to go that route, you could also just take morning collapse again to keep yourself open because morning collapse just will kill something. Choose one. If you descend in this turn, you may choose both instead. Destroy target creature, planeswalker, destroy target non creature, permanent with one mana value or less. Um, two mana. Yeah. Wow, that's really so good removal. Yeah, it's a, it's the new dread board, but it's it's ramped up a pair level. <laughs> yeah. Uh you don't need to descend with this card. You could just go two mana, destroy your opponent's creature best creature. And that's it, right? Yeah. So yeah. it depends if you want to stick to playing your Naya. Or if you want to keep open, potentially, with the option to shift gears. Gotcha. This uh, ma- Malicious Eclipse seems pretty decent, too. Like, not awesome, but reasonable. Usually that effect is good. I have not been impressed with it in this set in particular. But I have to draft the set more to get a better understanding. Gotcha. See, real quick before you wrap it up, anything else notable, noticeable in this pack? There's, there's I said tree. I like the Soul Tree, but there's a Dead Weight. Dead Weight's really good. Oh, you know that card. Yeah, that's an old. You know, I forget which set it was, and I would draft it every time I see it because everybody's so high on it. And I swear, it never killed what I needed it to kill. Well, even if it just turns a three three into a one one and makes it a bad blocker, it is always also just good enough. Dead weight, stab wound. They're all they're all they're all really good cards. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, let's uh wrap that up. And anything else you want to talk about, Ultimo? The uh signpost uncommons want to accomplish in this set. So blue white, you have Master's Guide Mural. So it's a three colorless white and blue artifact. Uh that when it comes into play, it makes a four four golem token and then it has the ability craft with artifact for four colorless white white blue so what craft is is uh if it says craft with x then whatever x is you can exile another x from play that you control or from your graveyard and then you will transform this card so this one says craft of artifact so you can you can uh, transform your Master's God Mural by exiling another artifact, either you control in play or from the graveyard, and it turns into Master's Manufactory, which is an artifact that when you tap it, you can create a 4-4 Golem Artifact Creature Token. Uh, but you can only activate it if the Manufactory or another artifact entered a battlefield under your control this turn. So this card here, um, the premise of Blue-White in this set is it's really, really heavily based around artifacts and also crafting. Crafting is a big keyword for blue-white. And blue-white also tends to mess around a lot with the gnomes and also just golem tokens a lot of the time. Okay, so blue-white's your token artifact deck. Yeah. Red-green, you have It's Kinth. I guess that's the name, It's Quinth. I'm probably pronouncing it terribly. <laughs> but firstborn of Jasath. Uh, so it's a red green 2 3 uncommon dinosaur with haste. Um, whenever it enters the battlefield, you may pay two colorless. When you do, target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to another creature. So this is just a, it's a bite. Uh, if anybody doesn't know the term bite, uh, it is just that it gives your creature the ability to deal its damage directly to another creature. Instead of the other known term, fight, which is where the two creatures battle out against each other. You can tell Red Green is strictly about dinosaurs. So the more dinosaurs you can put in a stack, uh, the better off that these synergies kind of come together and work, do their thing. Gotcha. So basically, um, Gruel and the Gruel archetype, it's the uh, aggressive dinosaur deck. We have, I want to say, Uk Ben Back, I believe is the blue black uncommon oh the so, great mistake up and back the great mistake yeah so it's three colors blue black for a skeleton horror creature six four has vigilance and menace and has descend eight where if you have eight permanents in your graveyard 
You can pay four colorless blue and black to return Ukbin back from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. But you can only activate this at sorcery speed. So Demir, blue black, is really about the descend mechanic. So what descend is, is descend X means it's going to count towards the number of permanents cards that are in your graveyard. So what we mean by permanents are lands, artifacts, creatures, enchantments, planeswalkers, and so forth. Things that are not sorceries and they're not instants. Things that will stay in play unless they get destroyed. All right. It, additionally, finality is another new coined term in this set where finality? it's a uh, finality. So what it, what it means is that when a creature gets a finality counter put on it, it just means that if it were to die, you exile it instead. We've had that effect in multiple sets over ta over the past, but they just decided to finally name it. Right. Um, but yeah, so this set's about to send. Um, so a lot of their cards will say, mill this many cards, do this, do that, right? They're, you're incentivized to mill. Uh, usually a lot of this a lot of this will be split across the soul tie colors, blue, black, and green. Um, so you'll see a bunch of green, black cards kind of doing similar things. Not as much, but similar. Did um, they add something to the descent where, like, you uh, I saw cards like they called it unfathomable or something like that? It had like extra text on the descend. Um, top of my head, <clears throat> I can't find it. But I guess it was basically like if you had a certain number, then you get this. Oh, fathomless descent. Fathomless, yeah. Squirming emergence. It's just it's more of a because you know how it, you know you know in Lord uh not Lords uh in Dungeons and Dragons the D and D set mm -hmm. where they just keyworded a bunch of things in italics. Yeah, they just gave it weird names. It's kind of one of those things. It's descend, but they're just making it seem cool because it's a reanimate spell. Okay. So it's basically the same thing. Descend eight or descend three, they're all going to work the same, except for the yeah. number of cards you need in the graveyard. Yeah. So anything with a concrete number, so descend concrete number, so descend four means it checks specifically for four cards. Descend eight specifically for eight cards. The fabulous descent means it's it scales. So yeah. put a bow on it. Demir blue black graveyard matters. Yeah, blue black, green black. Oh, they all they all fit under the same under the same branch here. Gotcha. So for black red, you have Zuyowa Labatung. So it's a black. So it's black red for a two two, Goblin Warlock. It has Death Touch, and at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Zuyowa deals three damage to each opponent who didn't. So for black red. There's a mechanic called Descended. So don't get confused with Descend. Thanks, Wizard. But basically, <laughs> so the term of Descended means that if you had a permanent go to the graveyard from anywhere this turn, trigger disability. Gotcha. So with this one, um, as you know, it says each opponent may discard a card or sack a permanent. Uh, sacking a permanent, right? It could lead to an opponent's descend triggers if they have anything that matters on an opposing turn. But overall, if you if you were to put anything into the graveyard on your turn, this thing will trigger and deal three damage to the opponent kind of situation. Okay. So, opposite of Demir or Solta, this doesn't need a specific number. Something just has to hit the graveyard. Yeah. And also on tokens, because you know tokens do technically hit the graveyard. Yes, I believe so. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. I could be wrong, but I believe so. <laughs> I know tokens um they trigger death triggers. So I would assume that they also trigger this descended trigger or ability. Yeah, I think it's they hit the graveyard momentarily and then they go. And then cease to exist. But yeah, so black red there's a lot of goblins in the set too for them. So if you want goblin tribal, that's the that's the archetype for them. Mm, I do like some goblins. Okay. So for green white, we have Kutzil Malamet Exemplar. So it's a colorless green white for a three three cat warrior. Has the abilities of your opponents can't cast spells during your turn, and whenever one or more creatures you control each 
with sorry whenever one or more creatures you control each with power greater than its base power deals common damage to a player draw a card so what this is is that green white is going to focus on explore a lot but green blue also focuses on explore so you kind of have a little bit of crossover but this one here in particular uh so the whole each with power greater than its base power so as long as there's like a plus one plus one counter on it or any of these types of buffs right like the plus three plus three until a turn kind of situation if you deal damage with a creature that just until in the turn has a greater power than norm than it normally has and it deals coming down to a player you'll get the draw card also keep in mind with this card here one or more means that if you do twice you still only draw one card because the whole more groups them all together so so, so yeah this color as I, as i said this um this color combination green white is focused around trying to have the creatures kind of come in at the opponent with greater power than their base power so green white is like aggressive explorer yeah yeah to a degree yeah all right well optimal thanks for coming man um hopefully we get to do this again everybody still watching if you want to win that free release uh code comment the last card i evaluated like comment and subscribe and i'll give it away in the next video we'll do this again um yeah Everybody still watching? If you want to win that free release uh, code, comment the last card I evaluated, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll give it away in the next video. Next time, I'm Sleeveless. And I'm Optimal.